Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is the classic 1971 adaptation of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory written by Roald Dahl? Roald Dahl. Roald? Roald? Uh, let me look it up. Uh, looks like Roald Dahl seems to be the proper way to say it. He basically has a name that you can't help but sound like a madman no matter how you say it. This movie takes place in a small town that is home to the world famous Wonka Chocolate Factory. After school, the children race to the local candy shop to get their fill of all the delicious Wonka candies. All except local paperboy Charlie Bucket, who's forced to look in from the outside because his family doesn't have enough money. Which shouldn't matter in the slightest, because the proprietor of this candy shop is just giving away candy. He has not charged a single child, and now he's just letting them go behind the counter. Charlie lives with his widowed mother and both sets of grandparents who have all been bedridden for 20 years. Charlie's grandpa Joe specifically laments the fact that he doesn't have enough strength to help with the financial situation. As soon as I get my strength back, I'm going to get out of this bed and help him. All right, I mean, I guess don't beat yourself up too bad. If you're hurt, you're hurt. I mean, it's not like you'd fake being sick for 20 years. Dad, in all the years you've been saying you're going to get out of that bed, I've yet to see you set foot on the floor. Have any of them set foot out of that bed in 20 years? Like, does Charlie have to give his grandparents sponge baths and empty their bedpans every day? Because, man, between the constant stench of boiled cabbage and old people excrement, that shack must just be a horror show. Ugh. God, just thinking about it gives me a headache. Charlie uses the money from his first paycheck to buy a loaf of bread to go with their cabbage water, and he offers to buy Grandpa Joe's tobacco. From now on, I'm going to pay for your tobacco. So, no money for food, but we can still afford Grandpa Joe's smoking habit? Like, I'm trying to give Grandpa Joe the benefit of the doubt here, but he's not making it easy. So that night, Charlie and Grandpa Joe have a discussion, and we learn that Wonka closed up his factory after his competitors were caught sending in spies to steal his recipes. The factory was closed for three years before it started back up again, but no one is ever seen going in or coming out. And the next day, it's announced that Willy Wonka has hidden five golden tickets in his candy bars, and the winner will get a tour of his factory and a lifetime supply of chocolate and people all over the world lose their damn minds. Everyone, that is, except Charlie Bucket, whose family is clearly too poor to afford luxuries like chocolate or, you know, like two beds. Despite all of this, Charlie is still cautiously optimistic that he might find one of the golden tickets. And that's all well and good, but let's not set too many unnecessary burdens on this small child who appears to be the sole provider for five other people. I'm counting on you to find all five. Grandpa! The first golden ticket is found by Augustus Gloop. Of the Dusselheim Gloops. Eating is his hobby, you know. Is it a hobby if you need it to live? So one ticket is found, and for Charlie's birthday, his grandmother's knit him a scarf, and his grandpa's buy him a Wonka bar. I got it! Where? 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 Let's see! Oh my god, that's awesome, Charlie! Oh, he wanted that so badly. I am so happy for him. Told you, didn't I? Um, yeah. Yeah, you did, buddy. You thought I really had it. Uh, again, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we had no reason to believe that you were lying to us. Jesus, you know, I don't think Charlie should pull pranks anymore. I mean, practical jokes aren't typically supposed to make the prankster feel bad. And this one seemed to cut Charlie pretty deep. Like, he tricked us, and I feel like we should be giving him a hug. So the next golden ticket is found by spoiled crap bag Veruca Salt. Veruca's father shut down his entire nut factory for a week to make his workers search for a golden ticket. And Veruca is... They don't want to find it! They're jealous of me! I want it now! Make them work nights! You promised I'd have it the very first day! A bit of a pill. The third ticket is found by Violet Beauregard, who holds the world record for chewing the same piece of gum for three months. It's as absolutely disgusting as it sounds. So Charlie tells his mom that he wants the golden ticket more than anyone, and that's why he deserves it. And, you know, he got that from Grandpa Joe, but maybe don't take aspirational advice from a man who hasn't even made it to the bathroom in two decades. I mean, Charlie is just about at his lowest point ever thinking about how there are only two tickets left in the world. And he honestly looks like he's gonna throw up. He's putting way too much pressure on himself to find this ticket, especially considering he's only had one candy bar so far. The second to last golden ticket is found in Arizona by Mike TV, who watches a lot of TV. They try to make it seem like the TV watching is what makes him a bad person, but it's actually because he's a rude sack of shit who just so happens to watch a lot of TV. And that night, Grandpa Joe gives Charlie another Wonka bar that he paid for with his tobacco money. That, that was in fact Charlie's money to begin with, so let's start over. So Charlie bought himself a Wonka bar, and still doesn't find a golden ticket, and he slips further and further into a pit of despair. I don't even want to think about what would happen if he doesn't win one. The last golden ticket is found in Paraguay, and just like that, Charlie Bucket has absolutely nothing else to look forward to. Like, ever. So while Charlie is probably contemplating some pretty dark stuff, he finds a certain amount of whatever denomination they use in this unnamed 
possibly a European country, that he lives in and uses it to buy two Wonka bars. As he's leaving, there's a lot of commotion as it turns out the last ticket was a fake, and Charlie finds the last golden ticket. Charlie runs home and comes face to face with Wonka's rival, Arthur Slugworth, who has offered all the children 10,000 bills of currency, again, I have no idea where they are, if they bring him an everlasting gobstopper from the factory so he can reverse engineer it. Charlie runs home and excitedly tells his family, who of course don't believe him, you know, because of that painful prank from earlier that destroyed everyone, and the ticket states the winner may bring one member of their family with them, and Grandpa Joe asks to be helped out of bed so that he can go. And, okay, take it easy. He's not too steady on his feet, and... I never the hell? I, would climb over the moon and I knew the it! <laughs> I knew you were faking it! How is everyone in this house not looking at Grandpa Joe with complete and utter disgust right now? 20 years you have laid in that bed, too sick to work and help your daughter and grandson? And you finally break cover so you can go to a factory tour? I remember pretending to be sick to stay home from school and I would feel tremendously guilty all day. This dude seems to be coping just fine. It says the first of October, that's tomorrow. We well, don't have too much time. You live right down the road from this place. And like the thing is until tomorrow, you, you still have to go to bed one more time. I think you'll make it, faker. You know, I won a similar contest when I was younger. It was called Timmy Tonka and the Corrugated Box Factory. And Timmy Tonka was the made-up persona of the box factory supervisor, Tim Tonkovich. I went to school with his son, Jake, until Jake got sent away for starting fires. And I guess that has nothing to do with the story, but Tim was, like, super depressed after that. And actually, now that I think about it, it probably did factor into what happened later on that day. But I'm, I'm getting off topic. So the big day finally arrives, and we meet the eccentric Willy Wonka, whose first order of business is to make the children sign a contract absolving him of any liability should they die. And of course, Grandpa Joe was just fine with Charlie signing his life away. Like, even the terrible parents were like, whoa, let's pump the brakes and at least find out what this contract says. Grandpa Joe's over here like, oh, I want to see how candy's made. We then get to the nerve center of the chocolate factory, and probably the sole reason the FDA was assembled because Wonka tells them that everything in the room is edible, and this factory comes complete with a chocolate river that flows through it, just collecting all sorts of airborne contaminants left and right. Just gross. We find that the workers in the factory are Oompa Loompas from Loompa Land. Wonka transported the entire population of Loompa Land, and we don't get any details, but honestly, nothing about it can be legal. Hey, Daddy, I want an Oompa Loompa. I'll get you one before the day is out. I want an Oompa Loompa now! Well, you can't have one. They're not pets. I mean, I'm not really sure if they're considered people either, but they're definitely not pets. And also, I don't want to full-on say that they're being forced into slavery, but I'm not not saying it either. Augustus Gloop becomes the first casualty on this factory tour when he falls into the chocolate river and gets sucked up into a pipe. Remember you once asked me how a bullet comes out of a gun? What kind of weird-ass conversations are they having? The suspense is terrible. He, he's gonna go this time. I hope it'll last. <laughs> Ew. What? Eating as much as an elephant eats. What are you at getting terribly fat? What the hell was that all about? So they lose a kid and these munchkin workers just sing a song about how fat he was? That's not cool. Since no factory tour will be complete without a boat ride, they head on down the Chocolate River for an experience that can only be described as hellish beyond all reason? So is the psychotic imagery an important part of the candy making process? Or like, do the Oompa Loompas require it? Like, are the disturbing scenes and situations what make those creatures happy? The danger must be growing for the rowers keep on rowing and they're certainly um, not Mr. Wonka, when are we gonna see how you actually make the candy? You know, on this candy making tour? Mr. Wonka? We finally see the top secret room where they come up with all the new recipes and... Jesus, what a... Dump. OSHA would have a field day with this factory. You know, you never want to see how food is actually prepared. It's best to just be blissfully unaware. That's why if anyone wanted to show me the ins and outs of a Taco Bell, I would say, no thank you, sir. I don't need to see how a beef chalupa is made. I just want to eat it and then feel like I have the flu immediately after. So Wonka shows them the everlasting gobstopper, which he claims will never get smaller or lose its flavor. So basically, you can buy one and then just suck on it forever. Slugworth should want Willy Wonka to make this candy. Like a candy that you only have to buy once and never have to buy another one? That, it doesn't really make fiscal sense for Wonka. So Violet snatches a gum from Wonka that actually tastes like a three-course meal and then turns into a blueberry. Would you roll the young lady down to the juicing room at once, please? She has to be squeezed immediately before she explodes. Oompa loompa doompa da dee. Uh, guys, Mr. Wonka made it seem as though time was of the essence here. You should probably get her to the juicing room. No? You're, you're gonna sing your whole song? All right.
Which reminds me, on the Box Factory tour, one of the kids, Jeffy, got his arm ripped off when his sleeve got stuck in the corrugator. It was horrific. And Timmy Tonka's all acting like he's not concerned at all. He just pulls out this freaking slide whistle and summons the Dumpy Lumpies, which were clearly just workers of the Box Factory that were walking around on their knees, and he tells the Dumpy Lumpies that they need to get young Jeffy to the arm reattaching room. Like, we all knew that wasn't a thing. Like, Jeffy was losing a lot of blood. And I guess all the kids on this tour were assigned a horrible personality trait beforehand. And like, Jeffy's thing was that he didn't do his homework on time or some shit. And these weirdos pretending to be munchkins start singing a song, calling Jeffy names and saying like how his poor work ethic got him into this mess. But like, Jeffy wasn't doing anything wrong. Timmy Tonka told us to touch everything. It's a wonderful, wonderful fantasy land, he said. I mean, these machines were all running and had zero safety guards on them. Like, Jeffy was actively trying to keep his distance because he was scared. But he slipped on an oil slick and this machine just sucked him in. Looking back, children should not have been allowed within 100 feet of that factory floor. <sighs> Anyways. Lickable wallpaper. Lick a pineapple. It tastes like a pineapple. Go ahead. Try it. Does the flu not exist in this universe? And because Grandpa Joe's short-term memory is just pure garbage, he talks Charlie into drinking the floating pop, even though the last two children suffered fates worse than death by consuming untested Wonka products. We then find that Wonka has geese that can lay golden eggs. Why do you need a chocolate factory? You can produce gold! And Veruca throws a hissy fit because Wonka won't let her have one of his golden geese. I mean, she is a guest in this man's place of business. You can't just demand one of their products and then destroy the assembly line when you don't get it. But then luckily Veruca is weighed and is dropped to her death because she's deemed a bad egg. Which was the 70s way of saying she was a total Oompa doompa dee da If you're not spoiled then you will go far And also, this is not cute or fun. Oompa Loompas only perform highly choreographed musical numbers referencing the death of a child when they are in distress. The next leg of this tour involves a car that has the exact number of seats of the remaining members of this group. So... He knew they would be down six people by this point. Is this gonna go fast, Grandpa? It should, Charlie. It's got more gas in it than a politician. Oh, political humor. Also, I don't think Grandpa Joe can make any disparaging remarks about people being full of <laughs> We then learn about another one of Wonka's passion projects where they send a giant candy bar and beam it into someone's television. But in order to do that, the candy bar has to be shrunk to the size of a normal candy bar. So his brilliant idea is to produce a 50-pound chocolate bar and then turn it into a smaller chocolate bar. You know, between candy that lasts forever and now this, how does this man make any money? Oh, right, golden eggs, I keep forgetting. So Mike TV, who just might be the dumbest of these kids, sees what this machine can do and decides to use it on himself and turns into a miniature version of himself. So Charlie is the only child left alive on this tour, but when he goes to collect his prize, Wonka dismisses him and Grandpa Joe and says he's very busy. And he says Charlie doesn't get the lifetime supply of chocolate because he stole some fizzy drink, and Grandpa Joe suggests that they take Slugworth up on his offer. But Charlie, being super honest, gives the gobstopper back. And Wonka tells Charlie that he passed the test and he won. And they go flying over whatever this town is in a glass elevator. Yeah, look over here, Charlie. I think I see our house. Is it a dumpy, rat-infested shack? If so, then it's probably your house. So the factory's yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. What happens to the, the rest of the whole family? I want you to bring them all. And you know, at the end of my tour, I was the only kid left, and Timmy, who was just beyond drunk by this point, takes me into his office and he's all like, You won, my boy! I'm giving you my box factory! You now have sole responsibility and all liabilities are yours! I was like, hell no, I don't want this death trap! I want to go home! He's like, no, you can live here! We have a storage room and the Dumpy Lumpies have a cot in there! And I was like, no, I have a house! Long story short, the police had to be called and there was a standoff and... yeah. Timmy Tonka was shot on sight. Yeah.